surgery, and she wants to go bigger. You are endangering yourself. The operation that could kill her. That's life dangerous. Today, 3 at 3.30 on the CW Pix 11. This mom had her breast done 12 times. My breast size ranked in the top 20 in the world. Now she's going even bigger. The operation that could kill her. Don't get the surgery. You are endangering yourself. Life changers starts now. Imagine being 16 years old, a junior in high school, and feeling like you can't ever spend a moment alone with your mom because of all the public attention she gets. My first guest, Tori, says her mother is, get this, 12 breast enhancement surgeries have turned her into a walking sideshow. Take a look. Hi, I'm Lacey Wild, and I have an obsession with getting breast augmentation. My breast size ranked in the top 20 in the world right now. After my next surgery, I'll be in the top five. I had my first breast augmentation when I was 24. I went from an A cup to a D cup when I was 26. I went up to a triple D when I was like 28 or 29. I went up to an H, I think it was, or something like that. When I was like 40, I went up to a J, which was 1,000 cc's. And then from there, I went up to, I think it's a K cup, and I was 1,700 cc's. Just recently, I jumped up to a whopping 3,150 cc's, which is an L cup. So in all, I've had 12 breast augmentation. My breasts have totally changed my life. If I would have known this a long time ago, I would have jumped up right away. <laughs> my breast size hinders my life in a lot of different ways. I haven't slept on my stomach since I was 20 years old. Stop, 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 help me. I can't even see the stairs. I can't hug and snuggle with my daughter, wrestle with her. I can't exercise properly. Um, I have to only wear like really stretchy stuff. I can't wear some really cute things. It's impossible to find bras for me. Women react to me very differently than men. Some are very catty. Some are just prudes. Um, children react to me really like almost like I'm Mickey Mouse sometimes. I'm <laughs> like, ah, you know. Um, men, men react to me very differently too. I mean, it could be positive or negative. You know, you get the cat calls, which I really don't like. People come up to while I'm eating dinner and be like, excuse me, can we get a picture with you? I'm not really positive still to this day what they're doing with those pictures, but um, I'd like to know. <laughs> My next augmentation will be a triple K, which is double what I am now. I don't think that I'm obsessed with the getting room, really, honestly. I'm more obsessed with what it's doing for me. I just had to step it up and pump it up. Everyone, please welcome Tori to the show. So... Tell us about this. What, what, why can't your mom walk around without getting all this public attention? Well, um, when people see my mom's boobs, they just automatically, like, to me, it's normal. I've grown up with it all my life. So, I can, I, like, it's different when people are like, oh, my God, oh, my God, you know, looking at her. Um, but people see her boobs, and it's, like, a first-time thing. They never see boobs that big. So, going places with her, we go to the beach, and people just want to take pictures with her. Or, you know, guys are, like, yelling out things to her, which is, like, you don't want to hear that about your mom. It's weird, right? Yeah, it's annoying. <laughs> and my understanding is you, you're worried about her medically, too. She's had multiple surgeries. She's sort of addicted to these breast enlargement surgeries. And you're worried that something bad's going to happen to her. Um, well, I mean, she did get into an accident where she ripped her pec muscle. But I'm not scared just because, like, I have to see something happen for me to, like, believe it, but I know it is dangerous, and if she went bigger, I know that you have to go out of the country to get bigger boobs, so if you have to go out of the country... What if she were to decide to do that? I I just think that she would be doing it for all the wrong reasons. It makes you sad. Yeah. It, it, it upsets me. It upsets you, yeah. All right. Well, Lacey has had, as we said, 12 different breast enhancement surgeries, but the more shocking part is she still doesn't think they're big enough. And, in fact, an anonymous admirer has donated $10,000 for her to go even bigger. Please welcome Lacey to the program. Lacey, I don't normally have to jump up and help my guests down the stairs. I just didn't want to fall. <laughs> it's because of your breast you can't get downstairs. Well, I'm a little top-heavy, so, you know, I am wearing heels, so a, kind of... A little top-heavy. A little. <laughs> and, and in that video piece, you said you're contemplating going to twice the size you are now? Um, well, yeah, I am. You're thinking about, I'm thinking about it. 
And that's freaking your daughter out. Does she talk to you about that? Um, we have Tori talk about everything. Um, yeah. yeah, she's a great kid. I mean, I, this is oh, thank you. amazing. She's, well, she's just wonderful in her own right. Um, but, but, but she's a great kid. But she seems to sort of be affected by your choices. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that I she's not my only child. You know, I have six children. Um, she, yes, of course, she's affected by it. I think they all are. And, and she mentioned that you make your living with all this? Yes, I was uh, a marketing director uh, before I started uh, with my last few enhancements. And um, I have more than tripled what I make in a day. Well, I'm actually a lot more than that, but yeah. How do you make the money? I, I don't understand. I do uh, personal appearances. Like people ask me to do uh, to come post parties and uh, come sign, do autographs and pictures. Do you have like a that. website or something? That... I do have a website. I haven't really developed it yet. I'm going. I'm going to work on that. But I'm so busy right now because I handle all my own, uh, uh, like Facebooks and all, all, everything. I handle myself, so I'm so busy. How much do you make an average day? Um. About two, around two thousand dollars a day. Like if you're going to book me or I'm going to come out and, or, or anything like that. Yes, yeah, around two, two grand. So, so if, if I were to hear your story and what you've done to yourself, I would say, "Whoa, this is a body dysmorphia, right?" I mean, so you're like oh, yeah. addicted to plastic surgeries and all that stuff. And yet, there's a practical piece to this too, where you're making a ton of money. I'm making really good money, and I've actually been seeing a doctor to make sure I didn't have uh, body dysmorphic because they won't do surgeries on someone that has something like I don't think that I'm flat chested, you know. Um, but um, but did you want to go double where you are now? You're having trouble walking downstairs. Well, I have trouble sleeping. How is that not body dysmorphic? <laughs> well, I don't think that's body dysmorphic. I mean, I think someone when they thinks they have like a huge nose when they have a normal nose, that's body dysmorphic. I'm doing this actually for money. Um, whatever it takes to get my kids to get, get them through college. And I have more than one, so it's a lot of money. So um, basically, that's what I'm doing it for. Your breasts aren't the only thing you've had enhanced, right? You've had other surgeries. Can you tell me about those? Um, I've had my lips done. I had six injection sessions of injections of silicone in my lips. Um, I've never done anything else to my face. Um, I've had um, two Brazilian butt lifts. That's complete body lipo and um, fat transfer. Where? Where to transfer to? It's my rear end. <laughs> and then I had um, my abs tightened and sewn together. Um, I've also had an internal bra put in to help support the weight. Um, let's see what else. Uh, two tummy tucks, full body lipo, just that kind of stuff. Just that kind of stuff. <laughs> Sometimes I think when women accessorize their body to the point where they're sort of excessively feminized, yeah. I, I call that female, female cross-dressing. I don't know Does what that, that means. Sense? Like you over, like you Jessica Rabbit over feminize yourself. So I'm ultra femme. Yes. It, it's sort of, it's sort of you fetishize it. your body. Well, yeah. Well, I, I, obviously, it's a fetish. I mean, yeah. there's certain people that have fetishes. Okay. And yes, so the absolutely. guys, the guys that are that frequent your marketing strategies are, are fetish guys. Well, yeah. Well, the guys that have fetish for boobs. Let's be honest. Most of them are boob guys in the world. There's the butt guys, but okay. I, I just, it just. I'm trying to get my head around this. So. I know. All right. All right. We have to take a break. When we come back, we're going to find out about the complication with Lacey's last breast surgery that almost killed her. We'll be right back. Sears Day. And we are back with Tori, whose mom Lacey has had 12 different breast enhancement surgeries and is thinking about going even bigger. Tori would like her to stop. It's affecting her. It makes her uncomfortable. And I guess you've actually brought some of your old bra so we can see the transformation you've been through. Well, um, we started out here. You were an A to start with. Can we see that anymore? <laughs> I hate that bra. Um, then we moved up. I think it was my second surgery. We went to here. To a C. Yep. And that's C. what most women are aiming for. That's what most people look for when they, that's what they ask for. Well, you know, I really started doing this so I could start making more money because I was supporting children on my own. And um, everyone started getting their boobs done, and I wasn't making any money. And so I start, I, I was waitressing. So the other girls were making more money than me. So in tips? Yeah. And so I went out, and I... Because they had... Bigger boobs. Yes, absolutely. So I dyed my hair blonde. I got bigger boobs, and I made the most money. When, when did you... That's what, what size is that? I think this is a double date. I'm okay. just going to say by looking at it. And now you are a what? I'm an L cup. Is that what this is? No, this is a J. They actually don't sell a cup as big as mine. They're all special made. This is like my last one. So, Lisa, we, we all affect our own, our 
kids, right? Mm -hmm. So you're being over the top has to have an effect on that. Uh, when she's busy with her career, does that put you in the position of being parentalized, having to take care of the younger kids? Yes, it does. Just recently, that's something that she said. She says, Molly, I feel like you don't appreciate me enough. Um, because of uh, me being public a lot lately, um, I've I've had to do a lot more. And she's actually taken the spot. And, and she does a lot with her brothers and sisters, which means a lot to me. And sometimes I'm so busy, maybe they don't show her. I see you glossed over some stuff here. Sorry. She feels parentalized. Um, maybe. Yeah, that, but. Do you really? Do you feel like you're being the mom a lot? Yeah. Really? I do. Yeah. Uh -huh. I don't, I don't want you to feel that way. I want her to have her own freedom to be her own person. And my understanding is you had a tough upbringing too, is that right? I had a really tough upbringing. I was very, very poor. Um, I have six, you know, a big family. My mom raised us on our own. And I was kind of the one that took care of uh, my little sisters. So and you understand them. How, how much that sort of rips off your childhood. Yeah, and I don't want to do that to Tori. You know, Tori's beautiful. I'd like to see her, like, look at those eyelashes. She should have her own eyelash commercial. Um, <laughs> but, you, know. But, you know, but I'm going to stop you. She should have her own childhood first. Absolutely, absolutely. And I want her to have that. And I want her to. Yeah, that's really. But this has been very recent, Dr. Griff. Okay. This has been very, very recent. Like, you know, I've only come out into the public in the last six months. And uh, has it all been a windfall? I mean, it's like day after day I'm doing another public appearance or something. And um, But I don't want to ever let get anything lost. In, I mean, she in does, mask. like, let me go out, you know, when later on, like, after. But I feel like sometimes... Um, I watch the kids, or like I help her watch my little brothers and sisters, and you know, or like I clean the house, and then she comes home, and then she's just like, "That's not clean," or like she just she doesn't really um, appreciate what I right. do. I, I understand exactly what she's saying. Um, before the break, you mentioned that something. I mentioned that something really almost disastrous happened. Yeah. With your implants, tell me about that. Um, two weeks after I had the uh, thirty-one fifty CCs put in. Um, and became twice the size I was. My pec muscle, I was turning the water on, and my pec muscle and my vein ripped inside my body. Um, and within like three seconds, my right breast grew to the size of a volleyball. And I was rushed to the emergency hospital, and um, so I had a really rare blood. You nearly bled internally to death. Yeah. I and there was nothing to stop the bleeding. There was nothing to stop it, and I'm, I'm very rare blood. So I store my own blood when I'm going to have surgery. And... Um, I was rushed in. They told me if I wake up with one breast, don't worry, we'll get it back. And I was like, oh, that was the scariest thing. But I was just, I still had sutures. So I was worried about it extruding. I was worried about the implant falling out. Um, so uh, they got me in there. I woke up with two breasts. I was pretty happy. Um, but it was really scary. And the thing that I know that I hadn't thought of is like, you know, um, dying. I wasn't really thinking I was ever going to die. I was, I was, I, you know. But that's a realistic probability with all these series. Tori, how was this for you? Um, I, I wasn't, I wasn't. bleeding to death. Well, I wasn't there when it happened, but um, she did call me later. I think my mom's, like, probably the most dramatic person I've ever met. <laughs> so I'm just like, oh, I am. Whatever. And then, you know, but it is scary. I mean, if my mom died, like, I live with her. I don't live with my dad. So it would be so hard on me. And. It would be hard I mean, on all of them. Yeah. You know, it would, it, I have a little army at home. <laughs> and, and this fact that you had grown up so poor and now you've found a way to make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Is this like Scarlett O'Hara? You know, I'll never be hungry again. And now you're going to any lengths, including you know risking what? your life? Well, I risk my life when I get on an airplane, Dr. Drew. But um, I, I, I'll beg to differ that that's a little different risk than going under the knife. Well, maybe a little different. But, you know, um, I'll, I'll tell you right now, um, I've never had a house that's paid for. It's mine that I can actually live there for the rest of my life. It's paid for. I don't have to worry about it. I would like to have that for my kids. I, I, no, I get it. I get the motivation. You're crying. How come? Just everyone thinks I'm so conceited, and I'm not. I wear my heart on my sleeve. If I had to grow another arm to put my kids through college, I would. Well, that's a it's an interesting thing to say because that's what that's what it feels like you're doing. You're, you're doing anything you have to do to yourself or to anybody else. I'm tough. I can handle it. I just don't, I just don't want them to have to be tough. But, but they have me. to be tough. They have to be. You're you're you're, you're tearing up a little bit too. Oh, she's crying. So. <laughs> We love each other a lot. I, no, I get that. You're obviously a great mom, but but you're you are endangering yourself. You are literally. Maybe I need to get a life insurance policy. <laughs> I just want to be close. Yeah. That's an awful thing to say, though. Your your kids want you. 
you know, um, it's a really crazy world we live in, and uh, I'm doing what I have to do to support my kids. Um, I just want Tori. Tori wants to be a lawyer, and she wants to go to college, and I want her to have that. I never had that opportunity, and I and want I her get, to have that. I get that you're willing to go to any length to protect your kids and keep, have your kids fulfill their dreams, including put yourself at risk again. Tori, doesn't that scare the hell out of you? I don't think she's going to do that. You don't think she's going to? Because why? I just think she's just doing that. To try, maybe trying to just say that right now. To be dramatic? Yeah. Well, I am a dramatic I person. Know, I get that. And I'm you, very you already have trouble walking down the stairs. I mean, yeah. twice the size, you have trouble breathing. If she ever had bigger boobs, she would just be doing it for bragging rights, which is... Well, they're pretty bragging rights. They would put me up in the, in the top five in the world. See, that's pointless. Do you think, is it pointless or is it going to make you more money? Which is really. I, actually, I think, I don't know if it's going to make me more money or not because I, you know, that's I'm, I'm, I've got to make movies. you less attractive. Well, you know, it's half my body right now. So it would probably be a little more. I mean, I know. Okay. I, I got to take a break. We need a quick break, but I have some life changers here that are going to try to help Tori and her mom's relationship and assess the risk of Lacey's upcoming surgery. We'll be right back. <laughs> You're in the water. We're back with Tori and her mother, Lacey, who just revealed her plans for yet another breast enhancement surgery in just three weeks. Now, I want to address some of the serious medical concerns I have for this next surgery. I have plastic surgeon Dr. John Diaz here in the audience to talk about the risks of going bigger. So, Dr. Diaz, what medical problems do you see already? Well, I'm very concerned about you because I think uh -huh. you really, if you do this, you're putting your life at risk. Yeah. Let me explain what's going on with her right now. There are two things really going on. Number one, your tissues are probably so thin around the breast. Your, your breast oh. tissue and skin is so thin that it may not be able to support the weight of an implant that big. And your rib cage becomes deformed when you oh. have implants that large. So your oh. rib cage is no longer the normal shape of a human rib cage. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're changing your whole anatomy. Mm -hmm. And so if someone comes in and operates, you're putting that surgery at higher risk too because your anatomy is not normal. So there are a whole slew of things that can go wrong with your surgery if you decide to do this again. Yeah. Okay, thanks Dr. Diaz. Now, I want to bring out a life changer who can help sort out the feelings that Tori's having and maybe Lacey's motivation and what's going on between them. He's a licensed clinical psychologist and an expert in parenting. Please welcome Dr. David Swanson. So you see what I'm contending with? I do. Hi, guys. What do you think we should do? It tends to be that we tend to be able to tolerate intimacy in relationships at a certain level. Right. And I'm watching the two of you interact right now. And what you're saying is, I want my mom for me. When we go out, she, she has all this attention. I'm watching you go to her and you're saying, she's beautiful. Look at her eyelashes. She should have an eyelash commercial. And she's, it, it, she's a beautiful girl. But my concern is that the message, you say, I'm a good mom, and you definitely provide. And I think you probably do feel best when you can provide or you can be in a position of importance, like getting getting these roles or these fans. My concern is that we're not teaching her how to have a stronger sense of self. What she's learning is getting attention through using your body is more important than trying to go after it for yourself. Well, you know, you I, would, I would agree with that to a certain extent, but Tori is her own person, and Tori doesn't try to get attention in any way. This is me. I, and believe me, I don't push this on anyone. And I've not always been like this, okay? This is just something recent. I, you know, and I was pushed into the public eye, and I became very, very popular very quickly. You can die. Okay. You, you can say that this is about, the, the, you, can, you don't understand. John sits right here mm -hmm. and tells you you can die. And you say, I'm a good mom. I provide for my family. You do provide. But you're about to leave them because you can die and you're not thinking about their welfare. This is serious. And every time I'm here, you push it away. I understand what you're saying. But am I willing to take the chance of dying? Um, to, to, to Are you willing to take the chance to be here for your kids? I will always this be is here what's for that. A, You can die. Do you wish you wouldn't do the surgery? Yeah, I do. And do you want to tell her that? Yeah, I mean, I don't think you're going to do it. I know that you're not going to do it. I think that you're... I maybe, think she is going to do it. I think she's not. I mean, I, I mean I've known her, you know... Tori, 
I think she won't if you ask her not to. If you beg her not to, then I think she may not. Tori would never have to beg me to do anything. Do you want to ask her not to have the surgery? Let's just put no, it out there. She no, said, I'm you don't have to beg for anything. She I never heard would. you. But I've not heard you go on the record and ask her on your Tori behalf. Tori tell me. She won't ask me. Go Tori ahead, Tori. tell me. You don't get the surgery. Don't get it. And if you... Just stop with that. <laughs> don't get the surgery. Wait, she I'll said that's all her. you have to Let do. Let her finish. She wants to say something. Okay. And, if you, and if you do get it, I feel like I won't really respect you that much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tori, thank you. I hope that helps persuade your mom, because I'm worried about her safety. I respect Dr. Dude greatly, and he, he doesn't give opinions like that casually, and those are his genuine well, I, 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 I know so, there's a lot of risk. I have to take a quick break. We'll be right back. If you're in the Welcome back now. When we left for break, Lacey, we had a question, well, actually, Tori asks you please not to have the surgery. I'm asking the question, are you going to do this? No. No. Well, I guess time will tell. To come back and see me again, you'll see. I don't know. In the last segment, you just said Tori never has to beg you for anything. I, she has said she that you're not going to do this as clear as I could possibly imagine someone telling you this. And she's going to have to start begging. She won't have to beg. So no, you're not? Probably not. If it if it if it means that much to her, no. Okay. All right. Thank you. I think it's just going to leave the whole thing. It is. Okay, I want to thank my guest Corey and Lacey for sharing the story with us today. I also want to give a special thank you to Dr. David Swanson and Dr. John Diaz for their advice. If you have a story that you want to share, head over to the website drdrew.com and let's see if we can help you. Until then, I'll see you next time on Life Changers. Most